Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm talking about some of my favourite audiobooks. Now in this particular video what I want to highlight are books that I think were enhanced by the audiobook experience as opposed to just books that I happen to enjoy that I happen to consume on audiobook rather than in physical form. Now obviously it's difficult to compare because I haven't actually sat down and read most of these um, to be able to do a direct comparison and obviously you can't go back in time and get that initial reading experience but I am a firm believer that I think that for these particular books there are various features of them that will really and truly enhance by having it in audiobook form than just written down on paper or indeed in e-format. The first one of these that I want to talk about is The Themis Files by Sylvain Nouveau. This is a sci-fi trilogy which focuses on um, the discovery of a large metal hand buried underneath the earth that then seems to be connected to other large metal body parts that are kind of scattered around the world that might be connected to something to do with aliens. The reason why I think this does so well in audiobook form is because the entire story is told through combinations of interviews and transcripts rather than being in a traditional narrative format which means putting this in audiobook form really works very well because it is like the format that you would expect them to be in basically. I also think that the audiobook is fantastic because it's a app, it's a full cast and everyone does a really good job with the various accents that they have. Now word of warning there are a couple of scenes in the book where something bad happens to various characters and they scream which means that they really really scream in the audiobook. Don't have headphones on, be prepared for that coming up. If it sounds like a character's gonna have a bad time turn down the volume it's coming okay but I really think that the um, cast of narrators managed to bring this book to life in a way that I think would have been relatively dry and flat on the paper. Um, it's an amazing trilogy which I think holds itself very very well together. I enjoyed every book distinctly and also the overarching story. And I think it does so many like interesting cool things to do with um, like military information and science and like how would we approach a brand new culture we know nothing about as well as kind of discussions about like ends justifying means, what does it mean for the good of humanity, what can you justify and where are the moral principles that really get put in place um, to stop people from doing things that you really think they shouldn't. I have a whole review video on this trilogy so I'll link it down below but I love this one and I would heavily recommend the audiobook. I'm actually thinking about re-listening to it soon and I've never re-listened to an audiobook. In my adult life I re-listened to a lot as a kid, you might have seen the latest video about that, um, but as an adult I've never gone back and re-listened to an audiobook but I'm really tempted to jump back into these and re-listen to them fairly soon. The next one I want to talk about is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silver. This is a gorgeous speculative fiction romance which is following two characters. We have Rufus and Marcus I think their names were um, but basically we live in a world where there's this um, service called Deathcast which can notify you the day that you're going to die. You don't know when during that day but you know within the next 24 hours you will be dead and that this um forces these two characters who get this notification to end up coming together and the reason i really really enjoyed the audiobook was i thought that the narrators just like incredibly captured the real essence of the two characters they were both radically different and they were narrated by different people and i really think they did such a good job of of mateo maybe his name is mateo might be Rufus and Matteo, can't remember, but one of them was very kind of nervous and mousy and terrified of going out and the other one was um, sort of a bit rough and ready, kind of came from the wrong side of the tracks and it was really impressive the different ways of like capturing the sort of the essence of each character so strongly and then the way that they kind of got meshed together worked so so well. So I think it's one that I'm um, hugely enjoyed an audiobook and I really think it helped to make both characters more sympathetic because both of them had traits I didn't like but in audiobook form they seemed a lot more endearing because of it. The next one I want to talk about is Echo by, I can't remember, I'll put it here, sorry. Um, but this one is a series of three short stories that then get connected at the end but the thing that that really pulls this all the way through is it is about music and it's about a magical harmonica that each of the characters in the different short stories finds at various point in their life that is very necessary for them and it helps them to overcome something and then it all ties itself up at the end. Each one of them has a particular song connected with this harmonica and it's a no-brainer, it's very obvious here. The reason why I think the audiobook works so well is because it included the songs and it was so, so stunning with it. It was lovely to hear them like on a harmonica really blending it through and it just helped to carry when the characters were talking about like the magic behind the music and what it was doing to be able to kind of save them in the various ways that they needed it to be in their life. You could really feel that as well because you had that music 
um, to go along with it and I just don't think that this would have been as strong just written down on paper. It's a very cute little story as well, um, I definitely recommend it. I was a bit concerned about the short story aspect of it because I generally prefer longer narratives but I thought that it wrapped itself up in a really nice way at the end and I didn't actually favour any one particular character over the others which is what often happens in these kind of cases so I was really happy with how the whole thing played through. Then my next one is I've got a couple of specific examples of it but I'm just going to kind of lump in together classics as a whole I find I really really enjoy more on audiobook form because I find that I can pay attention to the wording a lot more. Some specific examples of this are The Count of Monte Cristo which is a huge beefy book that is about 55 hours worth of audiobook that there's no way I was ever going to get through without listening to it on audiobook form but again the vibrancy that the characters had and really meant that I focused and I wasn't skimming at any point. I also really enjoyed Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde which was narrated by Richard Armitage and there was just something so rich and lyrical about the way that he was describing it that it really again helped to carry over the kind of uneasiness and the sense of um, foreboding behind the whole storyline. And then the final one is The Lord of the Rings trilogy which let's face it is a rambling mess in places and has far too many songs but songs are made often better when they're sung rather than written down so that hugely helped that book's case. Um, I, I enjoy classics in general but I do think that in audiobook I can really appreciate the wording a lot more because when my eyes are confronted with a huge block of text I have a tendency to start to skim and audiobooks force me to stop doing that and to really pay attention to what's going on so I found them so like crucial to my um, kind of introduction to classics and to being able to read so many more classics now. And the final one I want to talk about is going to be a bit of a weird one because I didn't actually like this book at all. I gave it two stars and uh, I have a wonderful rant video that I'll put down below about it. But the reason it got two stars rather than one was because of how good the audiobook was. So if this sounds like it appeals to you, then definitely do it in audiobook form. And that is Daisy Jones and the Six by uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really didn't like this book, but so the book is, is the story of a particular band called The Six and a singer called Daisy Jones and them kind of coming together in a fairly explosive way in the 60s. Similar to um, the, the theme as far as a lot of this is told from interviews and kind of newspaper clippings and things. And I think any book that's really playing around with that format is naturally gonna translate very well into audiobook. I also enjoyed the fact that, again, it's a full cast and I do think a lot of the characters were very, very um, strong with their voices and, and the narrators were putting a lot into those voices to really bring the characters alive. It really meant a lot of the tertiary characters and, you know, secondary characters that we didn't get to see so much of still had a very strong, iconic voice going through, which helped when there was a lot of people talking at once and it was difficult to kind of keep track of it. There are many reasons why I didn't personally enjoy this book. I just found it was a very, like, played out um, kind of love story which was building to a big climax that for me personally never came and I found the two main characters unbelievably irritating and I want to smack both of them um, but I know I am in a minority here and many many people on booktube really enjoyed this book so if you are going to go for it I would say go for it on audiobook um, so that is it from me I'm sure there's probably more out there because I really do enjoy the audiobook format um, but if you know of any particular books that you think were really enhanced by their audiobook narration rather than just physical book please do let me know down below and um, that's pretty much it from me. Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!